This, ladies and gentlemen, is our 2023 Toyota GR86. I had waited over a year and a half for a less expensive base model, but Toyota decided to reward me with the premium version instead. Oh well, I'm just glad it's finally in the shop. At least I didn't have to pay any additional dealer markup. It still has the outline of the white shipment stickers as I had asked the dealership not to wash the car. After delivery, I had the car towed from the dealership directly to the shop. I hadn't even really driven it yet and it only has a whopping 8 miles. The car is immediately going to get paint protection film and I didn't want any rock chips from driving on the freeway. I got the same dark blue as my current daily driver so my wife won't notice that I blew 36 grand on a car instead of paying off our mortgage instead. I've already swapped out to clear side markers, blue mirror caps instead of black, and also wide angle mirrors. Just minor cosmetic changes. Life's too short not to be kind to your own ass, I always say, and that's why the first major modification to the GR86 is a Racetech seat. After a call to Racetech USA, we got our seats in relatively quick. At about 18 pounds each, the seats are fairly light. Keep in mind these are manufactured and shipped all the way from New Zealand and are packaged extremely well. Who knew a hunk of fiberglass would look so sexy? Along with the mounting hardware, the overall weight is about the same as a sock seat. The 4100 series are dedicated racing seats with a ton of great safety features. We use planted technology products exclusively. This combination of race tech and planted technology is track proven and is very hard to beat. When bolted onto a roll cage, it becomes super solid and can withstand the huge g-forces of a crash. This is the main reason why we love using race techs. I don't know about you, but I happen to be very fond of my spine. The back brace also easily allows the use beyond the 5 year FIA homologation. All their products are highly recommended within the motorsports community and why we're a dealer for them. The second seat is for a local customer. A quick tip when changing seats is to use some masking tape on the door sills. That way they don't get scratched up. Don't ask me how I know. Before you yank the factory seats, be sure to disconnect the airbag and seatbelt connectors first. The premium seats have a heater that you need to separate as well. There is a consequence when removing the side airbag connection as a warning message will show up on your dash. The warning will constantly block the voltage and oil temp information unless you do something about it. By using some 3.3 ohm resistors, it'll trick the airbag system into thinking everything is working properly. Simply shape the prongs like so, insert into a yellow airbag connector, electrical tape it all up, and the warning message should go away. You're going to need a 12mm socket to remove the four bolts that are holding down the seat. The one big downside with removing the stock seat is you lose the side curtain airbags. So just don't get into a T-bone accident. It's not too bad to remove it. It is bulky, but not that heavy. Just be extra careful not to scratch up the interior or the paint. Also, always lift with your knees, not how like I'm doing it, and lifting with my back. A small flathead screwdriver works wonders with removing the plastic clips. Just hit the left and right sides and they easily pop out. You need to remove the seatbelt assembly and wiring because it needs to be reattached to the system in order to fool it into thinking the seatbelt's always plugged in. Also be sure to wear gloves when removing the clips because the metal brackets that hold the connectors have razor sharp edges and you will get bloody knuckles. You'll need a 14mm to remove the nut. The seatbelt receptacle has a sensor inside which you need to reconnect to the car. I just throw the nut back on so I don't misplace it. You would think that you could just simply bolt on the seatbelt receptacle to the bracket, but that's not actually the case. I'll address it later on in the video. I called the Planted Technology and got their seat bracket and set of their side mounts within a week. We're a huge fan of their products. Here's the part number for the GR86. Funny thing is, the first gen FRS BRZs are the same exact bracket. We like using the 90 degree side mounts with the 4100 seats as it's a narrower fit.
Raise tech includes the four side bolts with every seat, so you don't have to worry about those. This is completely optional, but I personally like to add rubber washers so that the side mounts don't come in contact with the seat. As you can see, there's a small gap that's left behind. I do this so the side mount doesn't scuff the seat as much. For the side bolts, you're going to need a 6mm Allen wrench. Just torque them down and you should be good to go. As for attaching the side mounts to the seat bracket, you have to source your own bolts. We use these grade 8 steel high strength fasteners made here in the USA by Nucor. Unfortunately, the nuts and washers are made in China and Taiwan. We use 3 8 bolts since that's the same size as the slots on the planted side mounts. Depending on your height, there may be some drilling required. I prefer bolting straight to the chassis. No sliders for me. Planted seat brackets are 3 16 thick steel, but the drill press makes short work of it. I was going to torque wrench these to 40 foot pounds, but the mounting tabs actually got in the way. So I just did them by hand as hard as I could. It was a hot summer day when filming and my armpits stink. We tried to get all North American hardware, but our supplier said that the imported stuff was just priced too low to make it not cost effective. Too bad. We use nylock nuts to prevent things from loosening. While the planted seat bracket does have a provision for the seatbelt receptacle, bolting it all together doesn't quite work like I mentioned earlier. When fastened together, the receptacle becomes too tall to fit through the seat slot. From this angle, you can see the issue more clearly. A solution to that problem is getting seatbelt extenders such as these. You can order these 6 inch seatbelt extenders from any Toyota dealership and they're absolutely free. Here's the part number you'll need for the GR86. Surprisingly, forward seatbelt extenders will work just as well. Here's the part number you need to get and they even give you a fancy instruction sheet. Just be sure to pick up the same number as there are genders per seat and you'll be golden. That's right. 2. These seatbelt extenders will even work with later model S2000s. I was going to use metric hardware but I found that a 7 16 bolt is the best overall size for the steel buckle. I wanted to use the biggest bolt that I could fit so it can provide as much strength as possible. You're going to need a 5 8 wrench and socket and I torqued the whole thing to 40 foot pounds. I just bolt on the seat belt receptacle as well so it doesn't flop about. With the extender, it provides the seatbelt buckle a better angle to hold down your body. In order to fix the seatbelt chime, you have a couple of options. One is to get another seatbelt extender and plug that in. It's free, but it is wasteful. A better option is to use one of these seatbelt chime delete plugs. They're available everywhere on the internet, eBay and Amazon. We got a couple of these when we bought the bridge seat for the SU-1000. These are relatively inexpensive and lightweight. Here I am test fitting the seat into the car. One benefit with having a fixed seating position is that no one else will be able to drive your car comfortably unless they're the same height as you. Give those thieves a challenge. The seat bolts get torqued down to 39 foot pounds. I only screwed down two of the four bolts in order to fine tune the seat adjustment and why the seat flexes a bit. Contorting just to sit in my car helps keep me stay thin. I prefer head restraints to minimize my skull from bouncing around. Seating position is awesome. Visibility is fine when looking over to the next lane. They also prevent eye contact from rice boys and supercharged Honda Civics wanting to race you. You get out of the seat the same graceful way you get in. Ideally, you need to use a six point harness with a containment seat. It requires welding in a roll cage though. Maybe one day the GR86 will get one in the future, but not anytime soon. Since this is a streetcar, I'll be using the OEM 3 point seat belt instead. A harness guide had a sharp edge I had to file down so it doesn't fray the belt. Thread the belt through the guides like so. and torque down the bolt anchor to 21 foot-pounds. With a little hard work and a lot of swearing, you should end up with results such as this. It looks really good.
None of that silly Subaru eyesight nonsense for me. The seat fits in with the slimmest of margins. You can barely see the gap. No interference at all though. So there you have it folks, a Racetech seat in a GR86. If you're in the market for a racing seat, let us know. We can source any and all of their products. Whether you need a 4100, a 4119, or a 9119 like in the CUDA, or even a fully custom made seat, we've got you covered. The only reason why the S2000 doesn't have a race tech installed is because at just under 24 inches, the 4100 is simply too wide. There's no way one would fit. For our local Bay Area California customers, if you buy a seat and planted hardware, we'll drill and install it. Provide a seatbelt extender and resistor. And include a set of mounting bolts with every purchase. We like to take care of our customers by giving away free shiny bolts. All of our out of town customers will get sent an install kit as well in order to make it as easy for you as possible. The funny thing is the car isn't going to be tracked anytime soon. We have the CUDA for that purpose. The GR86 is going to be a daily driver and I want to drive as many miles in it as possible. The engines in these things are a bit fragile and I hope I don't get unlucky. I really like the looks of the car and I hope to keep it for a very long time. The GR86 and the BRZ aren't going to be made forever and I'm just grateful that they're still available. If my son gets into cars, maybe he'll even drive it one day. Maybe it'll even be a future classic. Who knows? Only time will tell. In the meantime, we're just going to enjoy it as much as we can. Be sure to stay tuned for more videos on future upgrades. Oh, and if the engine blows up, we'll make a video of that as well. That's it from us, or Rallis Productions. Catch you guys later. A solution to that problem is getting seatbelt extenders such as these. <laughs>